Okay, so uh, the other day we did a little podcast on direct object pronouns, how to use them in English and Spanish, why, why we use them. Right now what I'm going to tell you is how they're placed or where you put them in a sentence in Spanish. And there are actually five different rules for pronoun placement, direct object pronouns or indirect object pronouns, uh, in a sentence in Spanish. And here are the five rules, okay? Number one, before a conjugated verb. And if you don't understand these right off, don't worry about it. I'm going to give you an example of each one. The second one, tacked on to an infinitive. Third one, tacked on to a present participle. Fourth one, tacked to an affirmative command. And the last one is before a negative command. Like I said, I'm going to give you an example for each one of these. And for all of these sentences, we're going to be using the verb comer and the word enchiladas. So comer is our action. That's our verb. Who are what's being verbed? The enchiladas. So our direct object pronoun for enchiladas is going to be las. And now you're going to see how these are all going to work out. So for number one, before a conjugated verb, if we wanted to say she eats them, and they are the enchiladas, okay? So we have our conjugated verb. So rule number one says that the, the pro, uh, pronoun is going to go in front of a conjugated verb. In this case, the conjugated verb is come, she eats. Now, what does she eat? She eats them. In this case, las. Okay? Las come. Now you notice that's different from how we do it in English. In English we say she eats them, and the word them comes on the end of the sentence. In this case, it's going to come up in front of the sentence because the rule number one says the pronoun comes up in front of a conjugated verb. So don't get too confused. I mean, yeah, it is 180 degrees from how we do it in English. That's just the way it's done in Spanish. Okay, so that's rule number one before a conjugated verb. Number two, tack to an infinitive. In this case, we're going to say, she is going to eat them, okay? So this is rule number two. So we're going to say, va a comer, okay? She is going to eat, and again, our direct object pronoun is las. So rule number two says that the pronoun is tacked onto the end of an infinitive. Well, this verb comer is a verb in the infinitive form. So we're going to take this word las, the direct object pronoun, we're going to tack it right on to the end there, va a comer las. We've literally made that word one syllable longer, and that's totally fine. Okay, now, the more perceptive of you have noticed something. In this sentence, we have two verbs. We have an infinitive right here, but we also have a conjugated verb right there. So, according to rule number one, before a conjugated verb, we could, if we chose to, we could put the las up in front of the conjugated verb. The only thing is, you can't do both. You can't put the las here and here, okay? You could say las, las va a comer, that works great, or you could say va a comer las, one or the other, they're both fine. And no one's gonna mock you, no one's gonna look at you and go, oh, he puts his direct object pronouns tacked down to the infinitive. No one's gonna teach you about that, it's no big deal, okay? Rule number three, tacked to a present participle. So in this case, we're gonna say, she is eating them, okay? So our verb here, está comiendo. This word here, comiendo, is a present participle. It's kind of like the ing form of a verb. In this case, it means eating, okay? So rule number three says we tack it onto the end of that present participle. So we could put the las right there. Uh, problem though, if you decide to do that, you do have to put an accent on the vowel that comes before that N. You just do. You, you change the pronunciation of that word by adding that uh, extra syllable onto the end of this present participle. So you just have to put the accent on. Again, some of you may have noticed, hey, this word esta, that is a conjugated verb. So we could put the las up in front of there. They're both correct. All right? Rule number four to an affirmative command. So in this case, we're going to say, hey, you eat it. So our command is come, eat, all right? But we want to say eat them. So we're going to tack this right onto the end. Come las, all right? And again, most of the time, you're going to have to add an accent onto your command. It's going to depend on if your command has one or more, more than one syllables. <coughs> Uh, if it's more than one syllable, always put that accent on there to keep the original pronunciation, the original stress of your command. And rule number five, before a negative command. 
So in this case, we're looking at somebody and we're saying, hey, you, don't eat it. No, and our negative command is comas. No comas. Well, in this case, rule number five says the pronoun has to come up in front of or before the negative command. So we're going to put the last. Didn't give myself much room here. We're going to say no las comas. Do not them eat, which is how it literally translates to English. Again, this is a little bit backwards from how we do it in English. It's 180 degrees from it. But uh, that's just the way rule number five tells us that we have to do it. So, once again, five rules. They're all right there. You can probably take a screenshot if you want. Um, and there's some examples of all of each one of these there. Okay? So that's direct object pronoun placement. Done.